Dr. Dorothy Bendross Mendengal, School Board Member, District 2. Well, um, we lived in a place called Railroad Shop. Uh, they did gentrification over there, so they evicted uh, about 37 families. My family was one of those families. And from there, my mom was able to get housing right here at this spot. I moved from Liberty Square when I was in 10th grade uh, to um, the little home that we own now. Um, I became a student at Miami Northwestern. Oh, it was simply beautiful, simply marvelous. Beautiful families, beautiful. Families with hope, aspirations, all destined to go to college. We knew we lived in public housing, and um, we found out later on that we were on subsistence, which meant, um, in my opinion, a mild form of welfare. So um, we had the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yards. We had beautiful floral pieces. In fact, where I am right now, I could look at a Bougainvillea plant and uh, we took great pride in it, so much so that we shaped it uh, as a basket. So whenever neighbors would come by, they would uh, admire that plant. Uh, we had beautiful play areas, all green space. None of what I see now, none of the maintenance department, none of the garbage disposals that children would see as soon as they walk out the door on their way to school, none of that. The porches, the porch that I sit on now, were scrubbed so much so they were white. Mm -hmm. We played until the street lights came on and we were watched very closely by every neighbor in this development. We belong to everyone. So where I am right now, all of my classmates and playmates knew each other. Our parents knew each other. Uh, we had everything that we needed. We had um, where the center is now. It was a center for people to come and discuss issues. We were home. We had a huge basketball court out there. We had a huge tree that gave us much shade. And for every day during the summer, we had some kind of activity from the city of Miami. Um, right behind me in the court lived um, Captain James E. Scott. He was our, I guess you would say our manager, and he did quite a bit of training and letting us know that because this is where we lived did not mean that we could not reach higher heights. He would always come through and inspect your homes. And when he came through, he wore a white uniform with white gloves. So he would ease his hands across whatever and uh, look at his glove and yes. But that was the pride that we had in this place called Liberty Square Housing Projects. It was so different. Each time I come out here, I'm very sad. I am very, very sad because we knew if we broke it, we fixed it. We were taught that we were as good as anyone, in some cases, better. This was home. We were going to go and be whatever it was that we wanted to. Why? Because no one was on the streets during the school hours but Captain James E. Scott. Well, I'm going to be very honest and open. I'm very transparent. That's the way I am. I firmly believe that it started when families were separated. And why they were separated, I don't know how they were separated. Many of the fathers were not allowed to be in the houses. Why? I don't know. Almost every family when I lived in public housing, the daddy was home. In fact, the mothers were not supposed to work. 
The fathers were supposed to do what all fathers do, take care of their families, and they did. My dad at the time built the elementary school that I went to, Liberty City Elementary. He built uh, the Roney Plaza. He built the Fountain Blue. My daddy was a worker. So when he would, did have work and opportunity on the beach, he had to be off the beach before the sun went down. So we named the beach Sundown City. <laughs> and the reason he had to be off the beach, can you talk because, about what Miami was like then in terms of race? Yes, he was colored. And so we could go to the end of 62nd Street and 12th Avenue to meet Daddy, but we couldn't cross 12th Avenue because there was a huge wall, about 10, 12 feet. So I know you heard the story of the wall. Well, we were not allowed to go around the wall, but since I'm being very transparent, I did. And Daddy caught me. Can you tell me about that time? Oh, why, it was, why did you go over? Well, because I'm a ch kid. What do you, when you tell children that they can't do something, it's got to be a reason. So what's on the other side of the wall that I'm not allowed to see? Yeah. I did. And my dad was coming down 62nd and he saw me and he said, um, I'm going to have to tell your mom. Uh, my mom had a thing about daddy whipping us because she thought he might hit us too hard. So um, mom took the, um, I guess she was to the responsibility of spanking us and there were seven of us. So she had good children because we didn't want a spanking. So you grew up with seven siblings or there were six other siblings in this unit that's right behind yes, you? Yes, three bedrooms, one bath. But it was fun, it was well kept. Uh, we got a television, um, probably, I can't remember how old I was, but I do remember that um, it was not color it was black and white, but most of us had televisions here. And um, we had the best mother and the best cook um, on this block. Everyone knew Miss Ora and her cooking, so children would play with us until dinner time. So mama would say, uh, make sure they come in and eat. We were family. Um, we went to church, we um, went to movies, but we all went together there was a movie theater down on 15th Avenue and about 68th Street, 67th Street. It was called The Shack. And it was called The Shack because it was, it was not that bad. But it was all that we had. So, you know, we gave our places names. And it was uh, the movie cost um, nine cents. So after we got through playing and cleaning up, you know, doing our chores, there would be at least 10 of us. So one got to get the extra penny and everybody went into the theater. It was the best place to live. I think I mentioned to you that it was CBS block structure. My daddy, as I told you, was a builder and I learned a lot from him and he would tell us, his sisters and brothers and everybody who did not live in this kind of a house, they came to stay with us during the storms. That's why I'm hurting, I'm pained, uh, because there is no reason, in my opinion, if this neighborhood had been cared for. You have houses uh, in Miami and on the beach that you can't afford that were built the same time that this uh, structure was built. So someone needs to know that Dorothy Ruth Bendross Mendengal knows the truth. I am not happy. Mainly because uh, I'm a school board member and the district that I serve, this is it. Sure. Parts of it, I serve the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor. But they know me. They know that it's my heart. Uh, they know that I am pained again because I just don't see if everyone had done their job everyone inspections telling um, the, the, the uh, constituents um, clean this place paint this place it's your home sure we know they rent sure we know that some of them don't pay as much rent as others but we were taught it was ingrained you wouldn't dare see a piece of paper on the grass and guess what we mowed our own lawns 
We broke it. We fixed it. I'm not going to say tear it down. I'm going to say repair. And I'm going to, I wish that anyone who lives here put in sweat equity. Give them an opportunity to be educated. The one that said I made it happen for her who just came over, gave me a hug, Cecilia. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She lived in Scott Carver. She doesn't live there anymore. Why? Because when I was the principal of Lily Carmichael Evans Elementary School, Cecilia was one of my parents. I had her children in the school. Cecilia had to come to the school to help with the children so that teachers could teach. So while they were there, about 30 of them, I had a parent in every classroom. Because my kids from Scott Carver, they were a little bit rambunctious. So they would come in and they would stay in the room. And they'd watch the teachers and they'd go home and report on the children who were naughty. And the parents would say, I'll be out there tomorrow. So as they got conditioned to coming in and helping with the discipline, I hired them. And we started part-time, we started full-time, and people started coming out there looking at what the parents were doing, so they were getting jobs like that. I have one who's a principal, I have some who are what you would consider teachers bar none, they are what you would call troubleshooters. Mm -hmm. These people, data input specialists, you name it, they all came from Scott Carver. That same kind of venture could have happened at uh, yeah. Liberty uh, Square. Yeah. I was at an event early on in uh, this transformation, and there were people there who were not so happy. But that's okay, because you, you have witnessed uh, my work, and my work speaks for me. I don't plan to sit idly by. I have staffers who go to every meeting and they come back and they tell me, and I try my best not to miss, I try my best to be there. But yes, I'm gonna be open and we're gonna do articles. We're gonna make sure that everyone hears what my struggle is. Can we stop it? Can we slow it down? What can we do? And uh, my heart tells me, just talk about it.